malaria still kills a child every minute around the world. Remains a major public health burden, causing 608,000 deaths. 608,000. Anytime you have more than zero people dying of malaria, that's too many, right? Resistance to the widely used drug chloroquine developed here in Asia and quickly spread to Africa, resulting in a huge spike in malaria deaths. There was a dire situation because we had lost chloroquine for the treatment of fossil malaria. Antimicrobial resistance happens when a parasite that was previously sensitive or susceptible to a drug loses its sensitivity to that drug. Resistance is not unique to malaria. It's resistance of microorganism towards this external compound that we give to fight it. An organism will try to survive. When we talk about antimicrobial resistance, convention has not been to include antimalarial drugs. This really should be part of the same thing. There was very little research that was being done on identifying new molecules that can be used to combat this resistance. We were in need of new medicines. And this is when the artemisinin-based combination therapy came. ACTs were a game changer. There have also been other interventions. Many lives were saved evidence that the last effective drug called artemisinins is also beginning to lose its effectiveness. Drug-resistant malaria strains in Southeast Asia could threaten the global fight against the disease. There was another resistance problem emerging again in the Great Mekong sub-region of Southeast Asia. There was a response plan where the five countries of the Great Mekong sub-region worked together to eliminate malaria. Now, independently, there is artemisinin resistance in Africa. We are seeing a delayed parasite clearance. The medicine is taking longer to cure the patient. You only need the partner drug lose its efficacy a little bit and you have high treatment failure. I developed malaria during the pregnancy. I was scared for myself, my life, and also for the life of my baby. The World Health Organization warns that the global fight against malaria could stagnate. There is no replacement for artemisinin-based drugs. You will see an increase in the number of cases, especially in the children, and with that an increase in the number of severe malaria cases and malaria attributable deaths. There's a look that you get when somebody is getting ready to die. And when the patient is four or five years old, there's a look that, that you get that, that you're the last person they look at. And they look right through you into your soul. And you can't save them. It's really important to stay one step ahead. We have to constantly keep on top of what the parasite is doing and develop new ways to approach dealing with them. There needs to be good antimalarial stewardship that we know where the resistance is and if the drugs are still efficacious. We're seeing smoke signs. We're trying to avoid that those smoke signs turn into a gigantic fire. MMV is a unique partnership that brings together scientific knowledge globally. Our job at MMV is to give countries the tools they need so that they can decide based on their own local circumstances which is best for them. We map what the resistance situation is today and decide what strategies to take, which compound to bring forward in order to fight the resistance. There are a number of interventions that we can use. We are involved in supporting pilot projects, implementing what's called multiple first-line treatments. 
And that's when you have two or more first-line drugs being used in a country, which makes it harder for the parasite to evolve resistance. When you have partial artemisinin resistance, the partner drug is at risk. MFTs give us the opportunity to delay the loss of partner drugs. MFT allows you to switch up on the parasite, and so it has to relearn. We supported the first two operational pilots of multiple first-line treatments in both Kenya and Burkina Faso, and they demonstrated this intervention was feasible. We've also supported the creation of the Alarm Partnership. Right now, we're working on a project with a number of partners, supported by the GHID Fund, to develop the first co-formulated and child-friendly version of a triple ACT to protect the existing product and to make it more effective against resistant parasites. MMV and Novartis are working together to develop next generation anti-malarial drugs. The ganaplasid lumefantrin combination provides a new class of treatments that patients could be provided. Patients with both artemisinin sensitive and artemisinin resistant strains of malaria Beyond this, we are challenging ourselves together to see whether we could arrive at a single-dose cure, and the work is in progress. We discover and develop new medicine in face of all the challenges. MMV is putting a lot of effort in making sure that we do have a full pipeline of antimalarial compound that could be part of the next generation combination of tomorrow. This contribution is just as important as monitoring, as making sure that these drugs are delivered in the right way and are taken in the right way in communities. We'll continue to do it until the fight is over. 608,000 people dying a year is real. Let's get malaria death to zero.